Welcome to Interstellar Cosmic Conversations, where we share experiences from our hearts to empower others. Welcome to Interstellar Cosmic Conversations. Tonight, we have Ronald Fellon returning back. Um, We have been talking with Ronald about his book that he wrote, um, Truth Beyond the Earthly Matrix. We have had two previous interviews where we talked about uh, five chapters in each interview. And so we're down to the final five chapters of his book. And having this conversation with Ronald has been so wonderful because He and I uh, agree on so many things. And then we also have areas where we're kind of like worlds apart, but we have like this mutual respect and the ability to just like co-create together in a way that allows each other to express themselves. And it's really interesting because Rana was not a public figure, but a lot of people have really engaged uh, in this conversation and have enjoyed what he's sharing. So um, I just want to welcome you back and thank you so much for what you've added to Interstellar, Ronald. Well, thank you, Patricia, for again, for asking me and giving me the opportunity to speak to more than just myself. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much for um, Micah and for Tracy for being here. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about uh, a multiple, multiple topics. Uh, we're going to start with gaining freedom from the matrix. And this is chapter 11 in Ron's book. And Ron, Tracy has said, I don't know if you heard her, but she has uh, actually read your book now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tracy. And, yeah. And she Very wrote- interesting. Okay. I didn't want to interrupt you all. (laughs) Um, So um, I wanted to, I always like to read a little bit about what he's written in his book to start the dialogue. And I feel like that helps him get a direction of where I would like to go. And then it opens up the conversation for anyone that's involved in the group. And um, so in uh, Gaining Freedom from the Matrix, he says, there are several ideas and concepts floating around about how a person's spirit can leave this earthly dream matrix and what it takes to do so. These concepts are usually religious or metaphysical in nature, which on the surface may seem to be completely different, but when they are looked at closely, you realize both concepts have more in common than people realize. The New Age movement, which is looked at as being metaphysical, is simply an expanded version of religion designed to give people the illusion of a greater choice. So we'll start there. Well, and that's, it's true. It's essentially the, the concept that if you look at uh, various religions, different denominations, particularly, we'll talk about Christianity since that's kind of a majority thing, but many of the others, you have Protestants, you have Catholics, you have Baptists, you have um, Pentecostals, you have a whole group of different denominations. And, so you pay, people have to look at the idea of, okay, well, why are there so many different denominations of religion if, in fact, religion in itself is the right answer? And, and the reason for that is because people get, well, because we're different. Each of us are different. Each of us has our own journey. And when people start getting into the concept of religion, start going to churches, they find that they agree with some of the concepts, some of the rules that they have, but they don't like some of the others because they, they don't realize they're on their own journey. And ultimately, they all have the same goal at the ending of it. But it's that pathway in between the way we start to differentiate, which is why you have so many different denominations of religion, even within the same churches. You have different pastors speaking on the same topic will say different things. And it's because each of us is different. So when people get into that, they that's why they start a new church. Then they change it there. Somebody then there doesn't like it. They go and they start another church. And the metaphysical concept is that the new age, so to speak, is designed to catch the people who understand that there's more to religion than what they're being told, more spiritual nature, more what we call metaphysical ideas. And 
in order to keep them within the matrix and keep them from really exploring and expanding inside of themselves, this new age concept has kind of come about, but it still has its rules. It still has its books. It still has the same ideas. And a lot of the people that are caught up in the new age paradigm still, they still follow with the, the concept of the external God, with the Jesus, with the saints, with the angels, all the external beings that religion holds on to because they, they want to get away and they want to explore other ideas, but they can't really leave the whole thing behind them. So it gives them an opportunity to explore things like out-of-body experiences, uh, telepathy, um, a channeling, healings. They can explore those, those areas, but yet they're still staying within the religious confines. So it, it's essentially another religion. It's just another level to catch people so that they don't completely get out of the system and realize that they can go inside and do this all themselves and they don't need all this other outside stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's really, uh, ex you expressed that very well. It's funny because I remember, and I, I don't know what I've shared because I, now I'm doing different interviews and I can't remember if I've shared something <clears throat> here or, or somewhere else, but I'll just, someone may tune in tonight and they haven't heard of this before, but I can remember in religion when I was like, wait a minute, I started to having to study the language for myself because I was looking at all of these pastors and Sunday school teachers and anyone that was involved in, in religion and how they were interpreting what was written. And so when I started looking, I was like, well, sheesh, I mean, what was written into the Jews in the original Hebrew language was so different than what was being portrayed in now this new Latin Greek version of Christianity. And they were in complete conflict with one another but they were still claiming to worship the same creator. Well, and I guess in a sense, if you are looking at the fact that you're worshiping the creator of religions, okay, we could say that because it's, it's going to cover you on all levels. Let's go to the new age, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hindu, blah, 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 you know, wherever you want to go with it. But I just found myself so confounded because I was like, this is, I mean, none of this is making any sense to me it feels like just one trap after another, after another, trying to lure me away from myself. That's how I felt as I kept dig digging deeper into it. It is. It's, it's <clears throat> everything on this, in this reality that we create, everything in what we call the matrix, it's essentially made of layers like an onion. Mm -hmm. And you, you get through one layer, but you're never out of the onion yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you just keep going layer after layer. And it's also as a way to, to weed out the people who aren't really serious, the people who don't want to grow or expand because they will stop at a certain layer and think, okay, that's good enough. That's what I think is the answer. You know, and when you talk about the, the idea of the, the different churches and the pastors and the speakers all having a different interpretation of what it is they're trying to tell you, you know, I think the last I saw there were supposed to be 100 and 120 translations in the United States alone of the Bible. And my, my, Irena, my wife, she's Russian. And when you read her Bible and then you read our Bible, the, the meanings of the words are completely different. You know, they, they talk about particularly in, uh, in Revelations when they're going to up to heaven and they're going to sit with Jesus and, and be his, his children. Well, essentially in the Russian Bible, it talks about being a slave. So oh, wow. you know, when wow. people start talking about these concepts, I say, well, which version are you referring to? Well, hey, I'm kind of with her. And then I'm else, kind of, I like ahead. the version. I, well, no, I mean, I'm kind of like, if hey, if you're going with Jesus, you are a slave, right? Yes. If you're sitting up in heaven and the concept, the idea you're going to sit around, you're going to sit around 24-7 worshiping some being in front of you and hope that they'll drop a breadcrumb for you. I mean, <laughs> what kind of a, a life is that? Basically, so her Bible says the translation is slave. Well, on the American, it doesn't say that because people will get a little upset and they may not buy into that concept. So they, you know, they look at things differently. And remember too, what I said in, in one of the other interviews, I think, uh, was that we wrote the Bible. We wrote the religious text. We wrote these ancient manuscripts. We wrote those before we came into this physical realm ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we did it in order to give ourselves clues and hints so that we would remember who and what we really are. But again, you have to look at these things as allegory. You can't, take them as a literal translation, even including the Egyptian symbologies and, and all that. It's nothing is literal. It's all written as an allegory in order for us to remind ourselves who and what we really are. But people, again, it's that onion thing. People get caught in thinking, okay, this is it. This is the direct translation. That's good enough for me. Yeah. 
And I like what you wrote here. You said some religions believe that everything you do comes back to you and you are stuck in an endless cycle circle of repeating or paying for what you have done in your past life or in a past life. Well, that, that goes back to what we talked about, I think, in the, the first interview in reference to karma, the, the concept of karma, the wheel of karma, they call it. Well, what is a wheel? A wheel is an unbroken circle. You can only go so far around a circle until you start all over again. So essentially, you're never going to leave. You're never going to get out. You're just over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And when you look at their, their idea of the, of the karmic cycle is that you are paying in this life for what you did in the past life that you don't remember, of course which means how can you change anything in this life when you're paying for what you've already done that you don't remember? So how can your next life be any better than the one that you're just living now? Because you don't have, you're still paying for the one you're already in. Yeah. You're stuck. It's just a, an endless cycle to keep people in there. Yeah. I see that a lot in like um, new age concepts and things that I was introduced to. It was a very similar thing. Just it's always about past life mm -hmm. stuff and you're always going to be paying for it. I feel like the same thing with religion, always paying for your sins. <laughs> Some of you did, you must have sinned, so therefore that's yeah. what you're paying for, and you got to, you know, be right with God, and then things will be okay, and, you know, that, that whole storyline. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll share something. And that goes, oh, you go ahead, Ron. That goes back to the, to the concept of, of sin is, yeah, that's fine. I'd, I'd rather that. That's fine. Okay. It goes back to the, the concept of, uh, of the sin and the karma is basically a, a way of treat, making people feel guilty. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that you're doing, every thought that you're going to have, every, it's, it's impossible to move beyond the guilt because they tell you that your thoughts are going to get you, uh, anything you say and do is going to get you. So people are, are basically living in a world of fear and guilt, which is why they keep recycling themselves into what we call the matrix because they, and again, I also understand that they're doing what they're doing because of what they're doing. And they can't do anything else. But it's at the same time, it's the idea you're not waking up to where you're going to be able to have more control over what's happening within yourself because you're still buying into the concept of being guilty. And uh, once you have that guilt or it comes back to the idea of uh, possessions, of ownership, of not being able to let go, attachments, you know, the thoughts you have in your head when you leave this reality are what determines what you come back and where you switch to in your next reality. You know, if you have all that guilt and you have the tunnel concepts and all that, you're going to be keep your slaves from recycling yourself back into the same programs all over again. And when you leave this reality, if you have the thought in your mind that you are done, there's no more levels, there's no more dimensions, there's no more worlds, there's no more guilt, there's no more attachments, none of it's real. When you, if you die and you have that concept in your mind, you're going to be free, I believe. Well, again, I, I can't tell you this for sure because it, I don't, but this is just what I've gotten in my own journeys is that you're going to be free to do what you choose to do after that. And if you want to come back to this matrix system again, you're going to do so, but you'll have more access to your memory of who and what you are, and you can play a different role and do it differently than what you do. So it's, it's all about trapping people. The uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead, um, when I read that book, I realized, again, I wrote that book, and which is interesting because a few years ago at a show, I had a guy come up and tell me, he says, uh, you wrote that, didn't you? And I said, well, I felt that when I read it because I understood everything in it and I already knew what it was. And they essentially talk about the idea of the thoughts that you have when you die are determining what's going to happen to you. And of course, they want you to call their shaman, their spiritual healers to come in to your house and they talk to the people who are dying and just after they pass on uh, in order to get them to take the right path and the right journey so they don't get stuck again. But, of course, they're doing that so that you pay them, you <laughs> give them food, whatever it is. But it's, it's, it's still another trap to get, to get money and things from people, get food, get items from them. But say, you can't do it yourself. You need us to help you when you're dying. So if your family member is dying, call us. We'll come over and we'll help them to walk through so they don't get trapped again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can I say something? No, because that's another trap I've, I've seen with other – friends that are on the spiritual path is that you always need somebody else to help you clear this stuff, whether it's family karma or issues, or if you have a spiritual block, you always need somebody else. And I was someone who thought that same thing and I got tired of it because I'm like, I'm spending way too much money and way too much time on things that I realized I could just do for myself. 
So I, that, that is very true. I think that's a trap that a lot of people under. I have to have a shaman. I have to have a healer. I have to have somebody else outside yeah. of me to, mm -hmm. to heal or clear this issue. And then what happens is people keep coming yeah. again and again and again. Yeah. It's, like, it's crazy. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and so I 100% agree with that. And so what, what I personally have experienced just for me, and I'll share this and you guys can, you can definitely say, Patricia, you're full of, or you, you, you know, like, you know, just, just say what you're feeling. So for me, it was like, I was really struggling because I started doing sessions with people and I do it on a donation basis. And I got a lot of ridicule about that because they were like, well, everyone was like, well, why would you do it for a donation basis? Why don't you give yourself a value? And I'm like, my value is that, I've already experienced this. And so I want to offer this to someone else because it doesn't have to be paid for. This is something I want to share with my own personal experiences, not to try to make money off of it. But what I, what I've come to be aware of, somebody might want to mute because you're, someone's got a lot of background volume. So when you're not talking, let's see who's got it and just mute it, whatever. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And um, so what I came to realize is that, wow, we do really walk one another home as far as sharing our experiences. When we communicate, and this is, this is what my sessions are, and it's, there's no such thing as me healing you or you healing me. It's when we communicate, we are creating some type of awareness within one another that creates this remembrance of who we are and that we're not a victim and that this is not something that we did not create or co-create with one another. And uh, so it, that's what became very empowering for me. And I'm, I'm started going like, you know, why is everyone charging these people? Someone will come to me and say, you know, I've been going for, through the healing process for 25 years. And I'm like, what? When I actually started going through it, it was just a matter of, First of all, I had to be a, become aware of what was happening to me. So that within itself took, it really did take me about a year because I, I wasn't familiar and I was so brainwashed through religion that I wanted to experience because it did teach me things. And it, it came to me at a time when I was very vulnerable and made me feel secure enough to keep going. Um, so I accept responsibility for that choice that I wanted to go through that experience. And then when I started to leave that, and then I started to try to feel, you know, become aware of how to empower myself, I still had to go through that kind of emotional experience and the whatever. I never, the, the, the most bizarre thing to me is I never felt like a victim in my whole life. No matter what weird crap was going on, I just didn't feel that. I always felt like I'm here for something greater and it didn't make sense to most people around me. But I think what you're sharing is so huge because we have lost the, rec the, the memory of that, that we have created. And we're going to go through, I think when we start sharing this, it's like we're going to be going through all five chapters in one chapter if we're not careful. <laughs> but, but there's just so much that is, well, it's all ours. It's all our creation. It's all what we wanted to experience. And where we are feeling like we've missed a mark or we've made a mistake or something's just not right. It's just because we're not ready to face that we did create it all. And I'll be quiet. Sorry. That was just huge to me. Which yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. That, that that's, that's really a, really a big thing is, is I try to get people to understand that you can't do anything, but what you're doing, you don't make mistakes. You don't make a bad decision. Now, but that said, would I make changes in some of the things I've done in the past? Sure, I think most of us would. But the fact is, you didn't have a choice in what you did. I still believe we're here simply to experience what we have already chosen. We're experiencing without knowing ahead of time what's going to happen. We're experiencing with feelings and emotions. And that is all part of our experiencing process. You know, So get past the regrets. Get past the, the idea that you're, you're guilty for doing something. You did this to this person. That They did this. Let it go. You, know, you did what you did, it's done, it's gone, it's happened, it's already happened, it's always going to be happening, and it was supposed to happen. So move past all those kind of ideas of, of being guilty and, and holding on to, to that kind of regretting of what you did to somebody, no matter how bad it may be. 
say you're sorry and move forward. Do it for yourself. And and you talked about the idea of uh, of going to see different people. And I think every one of us does that in the beginning. We all, because as we start to understand, we have this thirst for knowledge. And we're looking and looking for somebody or something that's going to help us to satisfy that thirst. And we start going through a lot of different processes. And that's also helping us to grow. And eventually you get to the point where, like Mike has said up there, that you understand it's you. There is no one else. You can do this stuff yourself, mm-hmm. but you have to get to that point. And it's like going up a staircase. You can't get to the top in one step. And as we go through these processes, we, we start to realize to ourselves that, you know what? It is me. There is no one else. It's, it's all about me going inside, working it out myself because it's me. I planned it. I set it up. And then we pass that on to someone else and let them get to the same thing. And like you do with your, with your work, Patricia, I, was, I got to the point where doing the, the work, healing work I was doing, the energy work, um, to where I would simply tell people, all I'm doing is giving you a jump start. I'm going to give you a chance to have the vibration, to experience <clears throat> what it is you were. Your higher self, my higher self will get together. They'll understand that, and it's going to resonate with you. And then people would have a, a physical, emotional, or a spiritual experience while I was doing the, the toning sessions. Mm-hmm. And I never asked them what they was wrong, what the problem was, because I didn't care. I wasn't working on that. You know, I didn't want my, my mind to get involved with it. And they would have their own experience, and I would tell them, take that experience, whatever it is you saw, you heard, you did, and it's there for a reason. Use it to grow. I said, but don't come see me again because I won't see you. Yeah, there you go. Well, see that, and that's perfect. I've, I've said the same thing to other people. Like, there's no reason. Once you, once you start to remember and feel these things, there's no point. And I love something that George uh, Cavasla shared in California. He said, where everyone is saying, like, original sin. No, it's not original sin. It's original intent. It was our original intention to create everything that we have created and co-created. There was no yeah. sin involved. We're not fallen beings. We don't have anything to apologize about or to regret. We don't. And, you know, we all grow from, I mean, we've all come out of programs and we're still in programs and trying to release ourselves and free ourselves from those. But, you know, that was huge to me. Cause I'm like, yeah, I mean, like I'm, I already knew this anyway, but it was just like, you always are looking for someone to say, yeah, right on. Like, I get that. Like, no, I'm not a sinner. I came here intentionally. This is what I wanted to experience. I'm not an abuser. I'm not a victim. I'm an experiencer. I'm an observer. Come on. Yeah. 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 Exactly. All the other stuff is designed to make people feel guilty. They make people feel guilty. They're going to look for something else. Someone else are never going to grow. Yeah. You have that guilt. You're still holding on to it. You, yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. And okay. So I want you to go into this and we'll go to the next one. You said we will not follow the light, no matter who asks us to go with them or what we may see. If you want to be free from the system, decide that now and work it in. So your belief work it into your belief. So when you have the physical body, you do not have to pass, go and start over again. Freeing yourself from the system will allow you to decide where your next journey will take you rather than letting a default program make that choice for you. So talk about that light, because I think that that is something that is so important that we keep, all of us keep trying to figure out. And I think it's just really good to talk about it. Uh, it's it's one of the default programs, I think, uh, to, to bring people back into, to just to shift their awareness and back into this reality. And I think I wrote in the book, and I can't remember for sure, but um, I had an experience uh, where I was having at one time, it was what would be considered a vivid dream, except it was way beyond a vivid dream. I was gone. It, it was, I mean, especially after when, when I came to afterwards and the experience I had afterwards. But um, part of what I was doing when I was there is, I said, you know, I can do anything I want. I'm the creator. I said, so I want to go see this tunnel of light everybody talks about. I want to see if there's anything there or is it just BS? So next thing I know, of course, I'm there. I'm in the middle of this light and uh, I'm well moving down the tunnel. But, but essentially, I understand now that I wasn't moving. The tunnel wasn't moving. It just because the movement's an illusion. But essentially, I felt like I was moving forward. My awareness was moving forward towards the brighter end of of the light and I'm looking around and there's nobody there. There's nothing there. I said, yeah, this is all bullshit. There's nothing here, period. 
which again, I had that, that knowing before, but I wanted to see, I was open to the idea that maybe there would be something there. And that was when I had that revelation that there is nobody there, there is nothing there, that you have a choice on what you want to do, that I was um, immediately taken out of that light and put to what I call the point of nothing. And where I had that, um, it was, it's kind of a hard thing to explain, but it's the point of being aware without having to be aware that you are aware. It's existing without having to have proof of existing. It's, it's what, I, what I'm now saying is it's the I am without the I. Uh, it, it's the point of from which we we came, um, and I, and I was there at that at that moment, which is what created source. And the knowing I had, it, all the information came to me as I did that. So it, we do have the choice. We don't have to follow the tunnel, even though all the movies are telling you that. When you watch the movies, they always have the light. They always have the the religious figure, the family figure, somebody standing there with their hand out. Come to me. Come to me. Uh, and that's kind of the, also the idea of the in-between life scenarios when you do the past life regression, which I've done. Uh, I didn't see the, the light or the, the in-between life stuff that they talk about, but uh, that's another big mind control program to get people to think that you have to go to the in-between life situation after you leave this world. And then from there you decide what you're going to do, where you're going to go, but you got to go down the tunnel in order to get back. It, it's, it's all the, the programming to keep people, shifting their awareness to another point in this matrix timeline. Mm -hmm. But you do not have to go, go there. It does not exist except we create it here. We create it with the mindset before we leave this body. You mm -hmm. can change that, but you got to do it before you die. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I will tell you something very interesting that you may really appreciate in sharing what you just did. We in uh, California did some exercises towards closure with things that don't serve us any longer. And I found it so ironic <clears throat> that the energy, the entity, however you want to phrase it, cause I know we all may express this differently. So I'll just do it the best way that I know how to. Okay. Um, behind the uh, God matrix. That's what I would call it. The God matrix, the God programming. <clears throat> originally he had introduced himself to me as darkness and that was deceptive because what he wanted to do is he wanted to make me feel that darkness was something negative. And so that when he came to me as light, it would feel as though it was the savior <clears throat> that had come to put out the darkness. <clears throat> and so I really had already done a particular process with this being where I'd already agreed that no, I'm not going back there again, but it's always kind of tried to bring me back into this relationship. And uh, I fought it. I wouldn't even go into religious texts any longer because I was so concerned that I would get called up in my previous relationship that I might get confused. And so I didn't even want to go there. I didn't have enough confidence in myself, but I have a lot of confidence in myself now to know that I can do it and, and share things without any kind of uh, fear. But so <clears throat> when I was doing closure, complete closure with this energy, it came to me as darkness again. <clears throat> and I was frustrated because I'm like, I'm not seeing anything. All I see is darkness. What's going on? Everybody else is describing these beautiful images and, whatever that they had experienced. And I'm like, well, I'm just looking at pitch black. Nothing's happening. I don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden at that point, he put on like a monk's cloak. And so this brown cloak kind of encompassed his body with a, a tannish color tie around his waist. And still in his face, all I could see was darkness. So it wanted to let me know, I guess, that it was taken on some kind of physical form just for my own awareness of what was taking place. And it bowed down to me, not in subservience, but in respect. And I did the same thing back. And we had this like mutual awareness and agreement that we thanked one another for the experience. And he just kind of walked off into a, a, in a cave. It's, that's what it looked like to me. So it was almost like we had just come to this mutual agreement that we co-created this experience, that we had served one another very well. 
and we acknowledged each other with love and respect. And when I say love, for me, love is not a feeling. Love for me is just a state of being because I feel like love is so twisted in this reality that people don't, they, they're always feeling like they're not love because they are attaching it to a feeling or an action when love is actually just a, a place of being. And that's where we were in that moment. And I was like, wow, that was spectacular. <laughs> You know, that's pretty cool. That's that. That's the concept that we hired these people, so to speak, these entities and beings. We created them in order to have the experience that we're having here. This, I still accept that this is a a reality of darkness, in which we are working our way back to light. The idea is to see how deep in darkness could we go, and we hired the best people to play those roles to keep us in darkness, to see how far we could go before we lose track of getting back to the light. And that's all we're doing. But Darkness is a part of us just as much as light is. It's just, it's the same energy. It's simply a, a concept of a duality experiencing both sides. So in order for us to experience that type of a, you know, the, I guess the darkness of the, to experience that, then it's you can't appreciate the light if you don't experience that as well. So it, it's designed for us to be able to work our way through it and get back. And you know, I, I think that's great what you did like that. Mm. I, I almost, for me personally, Darkness is very comforting to me. I, and I don't mean like in the sense of what people claim as like an evil attached to darkness, but I'm saying like, there's a reason you can lay down at night and go to sleep in darkness. There's a reason that in daylight you feel energized and you want to do whatever. For me, darkness is a very peaceful state of being. And I think it's way underrated as far as what it, the purpose that it serves, because I feel like, light and dark are extremes and the balances and the harmony is in between because you, you need both. I mean, just both serve such a beautiful purpose. There's not, it's, and, and when I don't, when I look at dark or light, I don't look at one as negative and one as positive, one as positive, one as, I just look at it as, as part of the process of who we are and how we have to experience this frequency of our existence this vibrational frequency um and i know you have a lot to say about that so i'm curious about that later but i just feel like that's a, it's a really great balance it, it is and then what you're talking about is essentially what i experienced in that <clears throat> experience that i had where i went to the point of nothing which is essentially existing it, it's it's a the point of balance, the point of peace to where there is nothing. You don't have to know that you exist to know that you exist. It's, it's that point. And then the, the light is the creation of the, from that in order to experience what we're experiencing. Because as that point of nothingness, you, you don't experience anything as nothingness because you, there's no reason for it. Once you start to experience something, you have to have a way to experience that. And that's where the creation of source. Mm -hmm. Source was created from the thought of nothing and source created light, energy, vibration, and what we call atoms in order for us to have what we consider a physical reality. But it came from the, the point of nothing. It, it's an aspect of, of nothing, but it's the same thing. It, there's no difference between it. It's the same. It's just and being able to experience itself in different ways, ourselves, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I see that great void for me, like, because I think I'm, I'll, I'll wait because you talk about that later. I'll go to, into that later. So okay. let's talk about, do we have free will and choice or have we been lied to again? So you say we are told that humans have free will and that no one has a right to interfere with our free will. The idea that we have free will choice in our life seems to be a concept that most people accept without a second thought. Um, and then you say, the more I learn, the more I learn slash remember, the more I believe that free will doesn't exist on earth. And what we have is nothing more than a limited illusion of choice. The system was set up so people would believe that they have free will and not fight against those running the show. I guess you could call what we, I guess you could call what we, have as limited free will but is limited free will really free will what what's the question do humans have free will really comes down to has 
really comes down to has nothing to do with any system on earth. It has to do with whether we came to this world with our life plan and all decisions already decided our subconscious spirit. So I'll let you go into from there. Yeah, free will is one of the, to me, it's one of the biggest programs that we have, and it's the longest chapter in the book uh, because I, I really like looking at that idea and because uh, it goes along with the idea of creating your own reality. You know, they're both illusions. Um, so, and what it, it goes into, the idea is that we came here to experience what we're experiencing, which means we've already chosen what we're experiencing. All decisions and possibilities that we could have made or already have already been made already there, already created. Uh, we're simply experiencing those things as we go along. But in order to give us the illusion that this reality is real, we have to think that we have the option of choice. But if someone tells you what your choices are, do you really have choice? Do you really have the concept of free will when someone's telling you what it is you have to pick and how you have to do it? That, and you have negative consequences if you don't follow their rules and their system. So that is not free will by any stretch of the imagination. But from the time that we're babies, we're basically told that these are what your choices are. And we grow up accepting that the limited choices that we're given is really a free will concept. Uh, but the, the, the free will is on that does not exist when someone tell well, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. If someone's telling you what you have to choose, it doesn't exist. It's the same. If you look at uh, the, the concept of religion, Christianity, now, people say, well, you have a choice. You can accept Jesus and go to heaven, or you can nod and you can go to hell. Well, if you really read what the Bible tells you, it says you're already born going to hell. So what's your choice? <laughs> yeah. there, there is no other choice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, either accept and follow their rules and submit to their plan and give them what they want, or you're going. You don't have a, it's not a choice. Yeah, and so for me, like even the process of where what we're doing right this moment, like here we've got Judy, we've got Micah, we've got Ronald, we've got Tracy, and we've got myself. And so here we all are, and we all decided, okay, we're going to join into the Zoom conversation tonight. But did we decide that here or was that already something that we had decided as we were co-creating this reality prior to experiencing the reality for me? And I, I just look at this, you know, I, everybody is free to share how they feel about it. And I'm perfectly open to listening and respecting anyone's opinion and their and their truth claims because we all here's the here's the reality we're all going on our own experiences that what we share that's what we share from our own experiences and they may be very different um for me when someone says manifest your reality i'm like really manifest my reality so right now if i'm in the thick of it and i'm looking at my reality i'm like well here's what i would do but i can't do that i can't create that I can't create exactly what I would say I want to manifest right here, right now. If I had free will, easy peasy, right? But from my greater being self, I experienced, I am experiencing everything that I wanted to, even the fact that I can't create beyond what I'm feeling like I want in the now. Uh, so I'm learning something every day. And I have, I have really... Uh, been able to acknowledge that and embrace it because what we're doing when we're trying to avoid something that's not comfortable or something we want to create beyond what we can actually manifest because we think, okay, now I can just manifest this in the moment. It, it really wouldn't serve our greater being. It's where we're feeling like, oh, this is uncomfortable. This is sticky. This is not quite what I would maybe would have imagined, but it's exactly what your soul wanted to experience. And so that's why it is what it is. That's why I can't just say, Hey, Royce Royce in the parking lot, a million dollars in my bank account. <laughs> I'm traveling around the world. You know, there's no war. There's no violence. There's no murder. There's no theft. There's, you know, it, it, it's not possible because we can't manifest those things because we wanted to come in and experience exactly what we're experiencing even when we want to deny that. Yeah. And 
<clears throat> it's true. We the the choices that we think that we have, everything that we're doing, and, and I made a short video on it, put it on YouTube about uh, why we're born with limitations. The choices that we are presented with, that we think we're presented with, are all designed to lead us in a certain direction to make us have a certain experience. And you can't move outside of what those are. You know, and when the, I use a lot of examples in the book about things about the idea of of free will, and the other concept is. If you can only make one choice, do you really have choice? You you can't pick, go outside a building and go left or right. You can't choose this car, that car, that car. You, you, basically, you're making a choice. You only get one. So how is that free will where you can only make one pick? You can't do, people say, well, I can go left or right. And I say, well, no, you can't. You can do one or the other, but you can't do both. <laughs> because if you go left, come back, and then go right, that's a completely different direction. So you only have one thing. So is that... To me, it's not free will, it's not choice. And we can get into the, the non-interference thing and the other stuff when we get a little farther along in that. But mm. it comes down to the idea that we're here to experience what we came here to experience. And the things that we think we're presented with as choices are designed in order to make us go in a certain direction to lead us on that experience that we're having. Uh, look at the idea of, well, and I kind of go in there too about the, the idea of, um, of things like our spirit guides and uh, the so-called angels and the uh, the family members that are out there trying to help us and all these people that are supposedly directing our life, um, the, even the concept of religion and God, that if we had free will, that would mean everything is an open book. There are no choices to make. No choices are made already. And there's no way our guides could guide us because they have no idea what we're going to do. No way the angels could watch over anybody because they have no idea what you're going to do until after you do it. You know, God's plan would basically be no plan whatsoever. It's simply whatever happens, happens. So we, we don't have the free will in, the con in that concept. Otherwise, none of that would exist. And the wow. same thing when you see a, a psychic or a medium and you talk to them and they're telling you things that they're seeing that are coming and that actually happens if you follow that path. Well, how did they know? If it didn't already happen, meant you were, you were already supposed to do it, then how would they not know that? Yeah. How would they know if it wasn't already happened? Yeah, and I, and I think that, you know, the, the whole concept of free will on a temporal level is kind of, it's a, a little bit shallow in a way, and I don't want to insult anybody, but it's, it, it is kind of shallow because, um, you know, the when you don't take ownership and responsibility for your co-creation, then you're always in a, a state of victimhood. And so it's kind of like when we're when we're dealing with the concept of, well, I've got to go get a job. I've got to pay taxes. I've got to do all these different things. Everything that we look at is what feels like it doesn't belong to us. It's, it's still part of what we wanted to create. So we're always at odds. We're always, um, we're always in, um, a conflict always and that's where that's why the conspiracy theories even though we know that a conspiracy theory is not really not a fact when someone's con conspiring to do something they're conspiring to do it it's not a theory but we also give so much of our power away by allowing all of these government type agendas the court systems, the education system, and all these other things, they control us to, the, to an extent that we feel like we are really, we have no power and we have all the power. The only reason that those things even exist is try to distort and distract us from the fact that we are so powerful and that we are these creators and co-creators of this reality. So I feel like it's really important for us to you know, just acknowledge that about ourselves and not give so much away. Yeah, that's, it's part of the, the program. Look from the time that you're little, when you have a look at school in the, in, in the school realm, you, know, you don't follow the choices and follow the behaviors that they want. You get negative sanctions. You know, yeah. it's an attempt by the society to make us conform, to make us behave the way they want us to, to make the choices they want us to make. Mm -hmm. Now you can say, well, yeah, you can actually you can go out and do pretty much what you want to do, but you're going to pay the consequences for doing that action. So, again, you can say, well, I can go out and, and jump off a bridge. I can go rob a bank. I can do what I want. You Well, yeah, you can. But then there's also the realities created consequences in order to narrow down what you are going to do or be willing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you and you wrote this beautifully here. You said 
When you look at the bigger picture, you will see that everyone is doing what they had planned to do and that they can't do anything else. There is no right or wrong decisions and no mistakes. Helping others and thinking you have free will to choose and change things are all a part of the big picture. If people hide their head in the sand, then that is what they plan to do until they realize it's a, it accomplishes nothing. If we don't have to follow our prior plan, does each decision create a different timeline, universe, reality, outcome, or do we or do all choices or paths we can take eventually end up back to this ultimate timeline with only one predetermined outcome? And I think that's brilliant. Well, it's what we're doing. When we talk about the choice, you can say, well, I can go left or right. I can do this or that. And you can. But And there's another reality where you did the opposite. But that's not the reality you're experiencing yes. with your awareness where you are at this point. So all that's all possibilities have to be played out in order to experience it fully. Now, yeah. could you switch over at some point and then experience that without ever knowing that you switched over? Sure. I mean, how many times have we died? I, I know there have been at least a couple of times in my life that I was pretty sure I was probably gone. Yet, here it was again, continuing on. And did I know that I would have died? No. But, okay, how, how do we know? We just continue on going on because we're following the, the realities, we're following the paths that we're supposed to follow, experiencing what we're going to experience. Mm. We're not creating anything as we go along. Because we've already created it. <laughs> Correct. It's already there. Yeah. So, um, does anyone have anything that they would like to share right now? Oh, I, I do. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> um, well, I would, Patricia, I was going to say I can relate to exactly, gosh, it seems eons ago, um, the first point you said about um, you know, coming to terms with the, these are the choices that we've already made. So you're not really creating anything new. And I think for me, like that's been hard for my ego to wrap its head around, like because like someone like me in my journey, and I think a lot of us have bombarded with, you can create new things. You can create or like manifest instantly your reality. Like that, um, what is it? The law of attraction type of thing, which I think we've all probably come across. Yeah. Um, Cause I would be the same way. Like, wow, I'd really love to like manifest this or manifest that. And I'd always be like, well, well what am I doing wrong? Am I not thinking right? Am I not feeling right? And then I, I, I guess I've, like more recently I've come to terms of acceptance of, you know, this is what I've wanted to experience. I mean, sure, there are other things I'd like, you know, certainly like to experience and, and perhaps I will along the lines of that. But um, coming to that form of acceptance of what you've created and experiencing that has been um, probably my biggest, yeah, like my biggest level of discomfort, but at the same time, like my biggest level of, comfort because yeah I mean sometimes on an ego I guess for example an ego or conscious point of view sometimes things may not be the way that you think it ought to be but I guess on a feeling and being level it is where you're meant to be for what you're here to experience and for your bigger picture of your life mm -hmm. um because I, I think I also found out I, I felt like particularly this summer for some reason it started happening where I could already start to see how I was living, I am living in the past and I'm remembering all the steps that I've made. Like almost like I could see my greater self leaving me um, like crumbs, like hints and clues of what I've already done just to help me see what my bigger picture is. Like including like this meeting today and, and some other meetings that I've been on. Like, oh, I've already experienced this. I've already wanted to do this. And it's just not me going about and living out those choices and understand how they fit in my greater, my greater being and my greater purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely agree that, that we already put out these choices and, and made these things. I think it's just like an ego concept for myself, maybe for other people. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, well, I'd really love to have this right now. I'd really love to have right, that right now. Is well, there something I'm doing wrong? Is it really, you know, all that kind of mind, monkey mind kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, when I relax into myself, I realize like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to be where I'm meant to be right now mm -hmm. and how life, blossoms and unfolds is how it's going to unfold and it's just a matter of kind of like following 
or go, you know, kind of going through that path and, and following it. And as I've been doing so, it's like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Like I'm, I'm actually comfortable with what I've done and where I am in my life. And somehow, some way things are still working out as I knew they would a long time ago. But, you know, sometimes your mind's still like, wait, I don't understand this. But it's like, no, I do understand this. So, yeah. Well, see how wise you are. So you're actually, you're actually going between worlds. What you're doing is you're like, you're, you're the actor and the observer at the same time. Mm -hmm. so you're, you're realizing your creator being and you're, you're acknowledging your creator being, and you're also acknowledging yourself as the observer as you're acting it out because you're, yeah. you're looking, look, you've acknowledged you created it. You're acknowledging that you are acting it out because, Oh, I would like this, this, and this, and this. And then you're observing the whole process. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And so that's what's so beautiful because I've done the same thing. It's like, I would get really frustrated when someone would try to put me in a, in a situation that I said, I'm so sorry for your experience. And I would stop. I would want to say, stop telling me you're so sorry for my experience <laughs> because that experience is who, why I am, who I am today. I needed every bit of that. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot to get there. And I, I'm not, discounting people when they're not in that place of knowing that. But once you're there, you're like, don't tell me you're sorry. I don't know. I know. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel the same way. Cause I've gotten the same thing. Like, Oh, I'm so sorry. And I hope it gets better. And sometimes we like just stops, you know, <laughs> but it's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm where I'm meant to be. And yeah. like I said, even though like ego wise or, you know, consciously, small micers, you might say is like, ah, oh, this yeah. is annoying. Yeah. But then it's like, you know, it's okay. Like, at the same time, there's this like sense of like, I'm like, I'm okay. And I, I, it just feels like leaps and bounds I've made between where I was like two months ago and where I am today. Mm -hmm. But it was like, wow, to have a sense of ease, acceptance, love and gratitude and know that all of this is actually here to help me for whatever it is my purpose is. And yeah. so I know I've left myself clues for why I'm going through this. Um, it's just now living it you know, living it out. And now I feel like I can with the sense of greater ease and greater acceptance as opposed to all this level of, you know, like uh, resistance, like why is this happening to me? <laughs> why can't I change it now? <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Judy? Yeah, that's, that's the ego, as you said. The, yeah. the, the ego wants to be in charge. And that's what you're experiencing when you want that. The ego wants to be running the show and taking everything else. And when you another way to kind of look at it is think of yourself as the writer of the movie. Mm -hmm. You wrote the movie. That's your higher self. You're sitting there. You did that. You created this before you came in. Now as the observer, you are the director. You are, mm -hmm. you are watching. You're kind of putting things around. You're kind of doing that. And you're also the actor inside the movie. So you're mm -hmm. all three of those positions at the same time. And that's what we understand here. And that's sort of, thinking it, well, we're just the actor. We're not, we right. are all, we're part of that. And the other thing too, is maybe there is an aspect of you that is acting out those other things that you wanted, because remember there are possibilities. Your right. awareness may not be there, but there's an aspect of you that is doing those. So yeah, you're already doing it. Mm -hmm. And you get to experience it when you get back inside your spirit self, so to speak, then you had to have all that experience already played out for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Judy or Tracy, do either one of you have something you would like to share? Um, I'm, I'm still in my pajamas, so I'm not putting my video on. But um, no, I feel as if I'm in deep water here. And I've just been going through a situation lately with a repeat situation with a, a landlord situation where they... I, I get into these repeat situations of, of um, danger and I'm realising it's... I do create this and that's where I'm at. I'm just trying to see the patterns in my life and uh, they usually have negative consequences. So that's where I'm at with all of this. But it, I feel as if I'm, I've been, I've jumped into deep water with you all. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm enjoying listening. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you for being here. When you say you jumped into deep water, are you saying what we're saying to you is overwhelming? Yeah, it's kind of hard for me to grasp it, yes. Okay. But I'm doing my best. <laughs> okay, we just appreciate you being here, so thank you. Thank you. And, you know, you don't have to agree with anything that's being shared. We're just 
we're all sharing based on our experiences and our perspectives. And if there's anything you want to come in and just say, Hey, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. And you want to explore it. You're welcome to do that. Thank you. I was very interested in what you said about the um, process of closure. I would really like to, I would love to hear more about that sometime or do that myself. Okay. Somehow. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we okay. can connect. I'll, I'm going to have to give you my, um, you and I communicated, I think last on Facebook messenger, my messenger has been up and down and mm. I'm, I'm getting bombarded with a lot of messages. So maybe, um, I can, send you something with my personal email so you can contact me that way instead. That would be good. Or else I could email you somehow and yeah. Then you'll have to yeah, we can, we can work on that after this. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Dream reality, the truth about the world and all that is okay. Ron, we got a beef right here. Okay. Okay. I don't believe I'm going to dream. So I'm going to let you, <laughs> I do, I do get that there are a lot of illusions, but I would even say this, and we can, maybe this is where we'll come to a neutral place. Like, even if you're in a dream, let's just go with your scenario where you're in a dream, even your dream would be a real experience, true or false? Yes. Okay. Correct. So that An experience our, doesn't make ground. it real. <laughs> that's our neutral ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My, my point on that is because it's an experience and by my definition of real, an experience is not necessarily real because of experience has a beginning and an end. How can you say, well, I had that, that experience was real. Well, if it was, but it's not now, but okay. it's an experience. So yeah, the, the dream concept is looking and understanding that everything that is here is a creation. A creation has a beginning and an end and they will always end. Therefore, my, my definition it is not real. So it is a dream in the fact that it's not real, any more real than anything else is. Okay. So for you, when you say something's a dream, that means like, you know, that we are infinite creator beings. We have no beginning. We have no end. So for you, if something, when you call something a dream reality, that strictly means it's our creation or co-creation and it will cease to exist. Correct. Okay. I yeah, Patricia and Ron, Patricia and Ron are not, they are not real. <gasps> Patricia and Ron are roles we're playing. They are an experience, but they're not real. So they are essentially a, a dream where we shifted our awareness to. It's the same thing when you have dreams at night. Are those dreams any more real than the life that you're living when you think you're awake? Well, you know, so at that time, you think that they're real too. So, Oh, okay. So yeah. I have a really good question for you then, because this has been really Okay. Uh, interesting for me. So I've always, my entire life, I've had vivid dreams, always. And people are always like, how can you share your dreams in such detail? Most people don't know they're dreaming or if they are dreaming, they'll have like bits and pieces. But I could say, look, I was driving down the road in a, in a hearse carrying a body and there were sparkles on the, on the wheels of the car and it created a metallic color streaming down the, the road. That's a real dream, actually. And so it was like the Herman Munster vehicle from, you know, the Munsters. And there was like these metallic rainbowish colors. And as the vehicle was going down the street, I would see the tracks of the, the tires being those metallic colors. That's how vivid my dreams are always. And, and that would go into relationships and, uh, you know, emotions, high, low, whatever they are. Um, so I can also at this point, and I could not do this before, but in the last, in the last year specifically, I can be in a dream and I can all of a sudden look at a situation to where, let's say my car is going over a cliff and I can go, wait a minute. Oh, the car's going over a cliff, but this is a dream. This isn't real. And I get myself out of the vehicle and I go, I'm not going off the cliff. This is a dream. What does that mean? Because that's happened twice well, in the that, last week. <laughs> that, that is you on, it could be like the etheric plane, the astral plane or something. It's still you, but it's within a, 
a reality in which you do not have the limitations that you've accepted here. And I talk about that, I think, someplace, and I can't remember now in some of the video, so many different things, I can never remember where. But the, the idea is that when, you, when you're having that, that's you, but it's also within a reality that you're experiencing at the same time you're experiencing this one, but it's a reality with less limitations, with less beliefs that you have, that, you, that the ones that we have here, we're very controlled, we're very limited on what we believe and accept here. And I found that once you get into those type of dreams and, and those type of experiences that you will find some of the beliefs that you accept here that carry over. I found that it applies into those other realities that you doesn't quite go all the way. Like an example, when um, I was one of those times I had that experience and I realized I was creating it and I said, okay, well, I can go through a cement wall. And of course, suddenly the wall is there. I'm going through this wall and, but I don't go through it. The wall starts expanding and my hands is like a rubber balloon. And at the same time that happened, I had the instant understanding that that happened because within this reality, I still had the concept in my head that humans can't go through cement walls. And so that was playing over into that dream reality, which is another dream, but with less limitations. And it was showing me what I was still holding on to. And so the limitations and the beliefs we have within this reality affect the other realities from time to time, mostly to show us where we're, where we're having it. And I've also come to the idea that in order to change things here, if you go to these, and I see you can go into your, your vivid dreams by yourself. When you do that, have an experiment sometime. Go into that dream and visualize yourself having an issue that you have in this reality that you have a hard time taking care of. Visualize experiencing that within that reality and then resolve it. And see how fast that will then resolve in this reality. Because now you've changed that, that reality where you have less limitations, kind of a pre-manifestation stage for this reality. Mm -hmm. And see how that applies over, if you can make those changes. I've always, I got the understanding that that can happen. I haven't been able to do that yet. But I've had the understanding that we can do that by going into those other, those dream states, so to speak, make changes where we don't have the limitations. And that will enhance and make things happen faster in this reality basically making a shift a little bit faster than having to go through the long step process, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so on. I've heard that too. I've always wondered how that happens, but yeah, I've heard that same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trace, is there anything you want to share? I think you wanted to share earlier and you didn't get to, I think we kind of forgot you. <laughs> no, it's really interesting. The, the dream state, because I don't dream anymore. Not as, you know, we have those dreams we just obsess in a day. I don't dream like that anymore. If I'm having a dream, it's really a big loose dreaming. So it, it's really interesting where, where, where you're saying you can go to another dream state and kind of change that and, and where it will create a, like a biofeedback into this reality and, and change this reality. Um, I'm really interested in, to, to try and work in that way internally myself you know that's I, th I think there was reasons why I had to read your book and that was just like kind of to trigger me to, to, to do more of an internal exercise really within within whatever triggered me in the book mm. so it's it's a really interesting book and, and it kind of really helped me a well, lot yeah that was just the information I got when I was when I was there. Is that the beliefs that we have here, the limitations transfer over into those other realities, the lower realities, and it can show us what we're still holding on to, and it's going to work the same way you go in the other direction. And that's why I say, if you, Patricia does those dreams, if she can make a change within that dream herself and make it realistic, something that she's working on, and and I think we can still do that, and it helps us to change realities here much faster because we've already got the answer in that other dream reality. Therefore we can make it manifest faster here instead of having to go through all the steps. Mm. Are you good, Tracy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So you also wrote here, I had done past life regression and did not see either 
the between life world or the tunnel of light that others talk about, this told me two things. One, that it wasn't real. And two, that this is my first time incarnated on earth. So I haven't gotten caught up in the trap the in-between life or near-death experience vision entails. These programs are a way of keeping people in the reincarnation cycle. And the longer a being has been here, the deeper in the trap they fall. So I thought that was really interesting because you talk about it being a dream reality. And then you talk about the trap. So I would really like to know when you're sharing that, what that means. Like, Who's trapping you? If it's your, if you're the creator and you're co-creating and everything is as it is, and then you're talking about the trap, I would like for you to share what that means to you. And I feel like it might be just the fact that these are again, roles that one another, that we're playing for one another. When I refer to the concept of a trap, it's, it's basically uh, something that we set up for ourselves in order to, uh, to keep us, make it a little bit harder for us. So when, when I look at it as a trap, it's us. There's no one else except us, and we created it. And we are just setting ourselves up with another challenge. And it's a matter of whether we work through those challenges or not. And you can, I mean, maybe a trap isn't the best word for it, but it's, uh, we kind of stick ourselves into a belief system, and we don't want to let go of it. And that's, in a way, is kind of a trap. Getting caught in, uh, like what she was talking earlier about, the idea of the law of attraction and how, you can manifest your reality. You can create these things as you go along, but they always tell you it's kind of an unknown time frame. It, it, it could be someday down the road. It's like religion. You know, religion promises you everything after you die. The law of attraction. Well, yeah, you can get what you want. If you keep thinking about it, keep thinking about it, keep thinking about it. Eventually you may get it again. It's another, it's a, it's a trap. It's a program designed to keep your awareness in one location. So you don't expand and move beyond and realize, okay, yeah, there's some basis there but it's designed to hold people in one place. So in, in a way you're trapping yourself is all it is. Mm -hmm. It's a test. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question later. I want to ask you about, uh, just don't let me forget this because I want to, I don't want to skip what we're doing, but I do want to know how you experience these revelations. Cause I'm really curious about that. Um, yeah, but, one of the things that you shared also after this was what might be the hardest concept for many to accept is the idea that physicality is not real. This includes the earth, the sun, planets, stars, universes, and everything we think is contained within them like human spirits, light vibrations, alien beings, energy, and other realities, dimensions, frequencies, and yes, even light beings and light bodies aren't real. Existence in itself isn't real in the way we think of things being real and you just blow me away saying that because I have so many experiences within that. So it's like, I have to hear your perspective on it. I will not, I won't challenge you. I'm just going to listen. <laughs> yeah. But what, well, you, you had the, the optimum word there and that is experience. Those are experiences. They, again, going back to my definition of real, they are creations. Uh, so they are not real. The only thing real is the eternal us. The eternal aspect of us that is real. Everything else we're having is an experience. So and an experience you, is a thought that from the thought we've already had. Go okay. Ahead. So, yeah, okay. So I have to ask this then. So when you say the sun's not real, the planets aren't real, the earth isn't real, I'm not real. Are you saying that? And I just want to. I just want to see if I get what your what your point is. Are you saying that? the essence of all of these are real, but the, the way that they are portrayed in the reality or what I, are you saying? That's not, I'm, I'm so confused on that. Are you saying that <laughs> we have created this in a way that, okay, we call it a sun and there's an energy and essence behind it. Patricia is not real as far as this, but it's a connection to that greater being of herself that is real outside of this is, I mean, I'm just explain, please explain, explain. Everything, <laughs> yeah. Everything is a, uh, everything is an aspect. And okay. when you look at the concept of our, what would be our higher self, the, the point of source and the point of nothing before that, the, the sun, the planets, as we, again, 
Now we can say planets and suns, but have any of us ever been to these things? Do we know that they actually exist? Now we see a light in the sky and we're told that's the sun, that it's this big, it's this hot, it's doing this. We see other lights in the sky and they say, well, these are planets and this is it. You know, again, we're accepting what we're being told without having any definitive proof for ourselves or experiencing what we're having. So they are part of the reality that we are experiencing. They were created to make the reality that we're experiencing be as it is and to make it more real. It, it's kind of the, the concept of being in a video game. When you start to play a video game and you become one of those players, you are not that player, but you are that player during that game. And everything that player is experiencing during that video game, you know, getting shot, the, the bombs, the, the mountains, the trees, whatever it may be, he's experiencing it, but they are not real. Just like that is not really us there. The real us is outside as an observer, but this was all created to make it the reality more real. But again, we're accepting a lot of these things that we're told by science simply because we're being told this. You know, do we have the experience that they really exist or is it simply a program where said, well, this is the way it is. So do they exist on some level? Sure. Maybe there's life there on these other worlds possibly. Sure. But it's us. It's us in either past, present, or future. It's us in another, another reality, possibly playing out another possibility. It, it's in the future or, the, or in the past. It, it is all us within all of these roles. But what we're being told exists doesn't necessarily exist as we're being told what it is. Well, well just so you know, I love my husband very much, and you and him agree very much on this, and I highly disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And my it was so funny because here's the thing, and this is where I'm going to, like when I listen to what you're saying, because he and I go th uh, with this, you know, like round and round, but I just, I have this memory of coming into this universe. So when I, uh, and not into this universe, I have a memory of coming from Sirius to the earth. And I remember coming from Sirius and I was this human being that had a cat form, but a human form at the same time. And it was so interesting because when I came, I came straight from that star system and I went right through to the heart of the sun. And when I went to the heart of the sun, I dropped down into the core of the earth and into the, the heart soul essence of the earth. But I was coming up like a, a dark cloud coming up, underground and when I did it the more it, it was just like circulating like this like a funnel cloud and then the closer it got to me because I was here as the observer watching all this and when it got closer to me it became this like ball of golden light a pyramid erected and then like this all C and I came into the pyramid and when the all C and I came into my eyes like face to face the pyramid collapsed and everything just went away and I was standing there like what just happened so it was like I was getting this connection of the <coughs> soul, the earth soul, and the sun soul all connecting with one another, the heart of us. And that happened to me several months back. And so it was like that was such a real experience for me. And it was like a true connection of these energies. It was like we really connected in an agreement that we had co-created our experience together. So that's where I get stuck when someone, and not just you, like I said, my husband, and I go, we go round and round about this. And I'm, because I'm the wife, I get to tell him to be quiet. And he says, okay. But <laughs> that was such a real experience for me that was like a, a confirmation as to how real my journey is. So I could only say that even in the experiences that we're having, they're very real experiences, whether it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know I'm repeating that again because it, it, it is me. Yeah. It's the ultimate in the, it's the ultimate experience because we we accept it as being completely real because of everything around you is designed that way to make it look that way. And when you say you came in from Sears, now I, I really understand that I came in from Pleiades. And now I don't have the experience that you did coming through in that, that direction in that way. But this goes back to what I talk about in the idea of, of time travel and, and how the universe works. Mm -hmm. Everything within this universe, all these other planets, Sirius, Orion, all these, they are humans. They are humans 
on some possibility played out within another possibility. Remember, we're going to this universe. We're trying to get to the top of the mountain. And there are a finite number of paths to get to the top of these mountains. And each of these paths are the time are the, the timelines within this to get up to the top of this mountain. And there's multiple ways. Along each path, you have the realities. That's the scenes that you're going to have along the way. And there's little side paths that go off and come back, which are our possibilities. Mm -hmm. so what you were experiencing is you were experiencing from yourself in what we would call the future, but it's all simultaneous. And right. at some point down the road, humans, as we evolved into these so-called other worlds, gained the ability to shift our awareness consciously to another point in what we call space-time, but it was simultaneous with what we were already experiencing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said that when we came back to this point in space-time, and this may be the one point where this always happens, where everything kind of converges together, as to where we came back in order to shift the awareness from the timeline that we have just completed. In other words, the timeline that we were on, which I'll call, say, the machine world tech timeline, that played out all the way. We experienced all possibilities, all probabilities. We got to the top of the mountain. We're done. Now we're coming back down again, and we're going to take another timeline, another trail to the top of the mountain. And in order to make that change, we have to come back down to the trailhead at the parking lot. And people like you and me and others that are here, we've done that because we're ourselves coming back to ourselves at this time frame, what we call a time frame, in order to shift the awareness from here, and then we start along this other timeline, this other path. And when that happens, the universe, the entire universe shifts automatically. Now, whether we go back to, you go back to Cirrus, I go back to the Pleiades, and we start experiencing that other timeline from that awareness point or not, I don't know exactly how that's going to work or how far we're going to stay here. But this may be the point where we have to do that in order to shift timelines. Those of us from the, what we call our future, come back to here to shift our awareness, which is basically all we're doing is shifting to another timeline. Now the entire universe shifts simultaneously to this new timeline and it affects everything because it's us. Yeah. The universe is humans. Yeah. And all possibilities and probabilities and all played out. So what you're saying is very real in the experience that you had. And that's, I, I agree with what you're saying and how you experienced it, but it's also a creation. It's also what you had to go through in order to get where you are, to be what you are in order to change yourself around, to make that change, to get back to the parking lot so that you can go on the next trail. So is it real? No. Is it a real experience? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I agree with that. And, and I'll also say like, I'm with you. Like when someone says ET aliens, interdimensional beings, whatever, to me, we're all that. Those are all aspects of who we are. So, uh, you know, if somebody yes. says, well, do extraterrestrials exist? I'm like, well, pff, I am an extraterrestrial. What are you talking about? You know, yeah. so, I mean, that's for me, that is what it is. And so, um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I also love what you shared about the timeline because I feel like there is this one organic timeline that exist and then you've got like all these little timelines that kind of veer off and whatever, but they all kind of come back to the organic timeline because you're not going to change a cycle that it was intended to expire, right. <laughs> you know, at some point. Right. See, so those, those yeah. are what I call, those are what I call a realities when you're on the path, which is a timeline to get to the top. Yeah. And then the little journeys you have off of that, the other aspects of us on the other worlds, that is all those little side trails that come back onto one timeline. Yeah. Now we've switched the timeline, which is basically getting to the top of the mountain a completely different way, but our goal is still to get to the top of the mountain. And within this universe, it is still to get out of darkness, per se, and remember that we are light, to work yeah. our way back to that. We're going to now do it in a different path yeah. than, than what we just experienced. But yeah. the whole universe happens. It happens simultaneously the entire universe because we are that universe. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay. Free will agreements and not interference by outside forces, truth, or another program. So I think we've kind of covered this. That's what's so interesting. The more I do these interviews, the more I, it's, it's so interesting how we get into a groove and we kind of go on <laughs> and on to where we're going to go in the future, but we're already there. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of, a, a lot 
of agreement amongst the metaphysical community that there are two laws of the universe that all beings must live by. First, that no being can impose upon or take away the free will of another. And the second, that there is a policy of non-interference with other worlds and beings. Um, to me, the idea of non-interference is like the prime directive on Star Trek, where they aren't supposed to even be seen by less advanced civilizations, much less change their DNA or come back in time to change their decisions. I'm not sure who came up with the idea that a law of non-interference exists, but all the evidence points to the contrary. So, explain. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we pretty much covered the free will concept. The, yeah. the idea of non-interference, we're always told that you know, humans are free on earth, we have free will, that uh, we're supposed to be allowed to develop and grow by ourselves. Yet the mere fact that we accept the idea that there are aliens or, or other species, the mere fact that anyone is channeling, the mere fact that we have any knowledge of anything existing outside of where we are already shows we've had interference. Mm -hmm. You look at the, the concept of the of DNA. The DNA have supposedly been changed. If we are a, a uh, was it a microcosm or the macrocosm or whatever that word, how that word goes, yeah. uh, we're already parts of everything to begin with. So that's already an interference. The mere fact that we are creation, so to speak, is indicates interference to begin with. Um, if the idea of, of alien ships, of UFOs, the ideas of any alien species, uh, that they're supposedly trying to control this world through the, the Anunnaki or the others, the reptilians, uh, the idea is that um, any, any concept that indicates that there are entities or beings outside of us that are attempting to have some influence here already indicates that the concept of non-interference is bull. Right. It can't exist. If we know they exist, the fact that, that, that non-interference doesn't exist because we know they exist, therefore there's interference. Yeah, well, and there's a bit, to me, for, for me personally, from what I studied through religion and looking at ancient texts and things, when someone says, like, Anunnaki, 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 Anunnaki see, simply means those that came from the heavens. Well, yes. did we not all yes. come from the heavens? Come on. Right? Right. So, yeah. There's I mean, no such thing as a terrestrial because the terrestrial isn't real either, yeah. Because we're all terrestrial, we're all extraterrestrials, we're all the ones that came from the heavens, we're all experiencing co-creating yes. together. So that's where that's where I'm highly frustrated. And when I do these interviews, and I'm always talking about empowering one another, we've got to stop feeding into all this fear. If we truly know yes. that we are creators and that we have come here to experience all that we have created and co-created it's an experience and that experience is meant to teach us something. It's meant to take us on to the next path that we're going to go on. One of the things that I wanted to ask you when you talk about the dream reality too, is that, and I, this is kind of a chuckle in a way, but it might be serious. So like when you say a dream reality, I mean, is this truly like the matrix where like someone's laying in a chair and they're like connected to all these tentacles and, that is the reality. Is that how you see the dream reality or is it something that's just truly a part of your being? This is, we are a simply a projection. Now I can't say that we're sitting in a, in a <laughs> tube. You know, I always make the joke sometimes that one of these days you're going to wake up and then, you know, have the doctors around you with a lab coats on and say, well, how was your journey? How was yeah. your vacation? You know, like total recall type thing. Yeah, you know, you know, I always joke that you may wake up and see that happening. Who knows what's going yeah. on? But no, the when I look at it as, as a dream reality, no, because even within the Matrix, when they were in the chairs, they were still part of a creation. They're still part of the dream reality. Yeah. And, you know, so it's there is no there is no end to that, no beginning to it. It simply is what it is. Yeah, it's all experience. It's just an experience. See, I, I feel the same way. So, and this is where, for anyone that likes to pick apart you know, languaging and semantics and whatever. I just, uh, to me, it's like, you know, we all are, are sharing based on our own experiences and we're already questioning so many things that the average person isn't. So we should never allow this to like create any kind of division or discord between us. This is part of breaking that illusion of separation and just becoming aware that, wow, we've experienced on so many different levels and our perspectives 
are different because of those experiences and there's no right or wrong. There really isn't. There's no right or wrong in what we're, you know, viewing and what we're observing and experiencing. It's just, it's just what we came here to do. Um, so for me, that's why I love having a conversation where we can kind of explore the opposites of what we would see as our reality, you know? Well, since we're, we should remember, we're trying to get to the top of the mountain and each of us is playing a role in that journey. So are yeah. we going to be identical? No, because then what, what would be the purpose of that? So we're going to have some differences. We're going to have some com similarities because we're on the same path, the same the same trail going to the top of the mountain, but we're going to see things differently as we go along. And that's what it's all about. And you share that because maybe yeah. the other person is looking to the left, you're looking to the right. You share what you saw. Oh, cool. Now, now I don't have to go through that. Yeah. So I'm not going to have a whole lot of input on the last chapter of your book. I kind of just want to let you explain what you wanted to share in this chapter because you talk about evolution of the human agenda and wave X and um, I would just kind of like to let you share what you wanted um, us to take away from that. And if anyone would like to add to it, that's great. Well, that was kind of some older concept. I think that was back around um, 2012. Uh, what there was talk of, I think it was around that time. There was, maybe it was later on. I, I don't remember past times very much. The The idea was that throughout the a wave of energy was coming from the galactic center, supposedly the universe. It was coming through Earth. We were going to pass through that. Uh, and the big idea was that there were going to be a lot of spirits or souls contained within that energy and that they were going to be coming here to do walk-ins, to take over bodies and that kind of thing in order to promote their agenda, whatever it may be. And that was the kind of the generally accepted concept of people out there. So everybody was getting afraid that we're go ahead. So are you, when you say wave X, is that the same thing as planet X? Um, no, this was more just an energy wave that was supposed to be coming through at one time. It was kind of a big deal. That's the way they uh, explain. They were the part well, of the, the talk. That's the way they explain. Go ahead. Planet, well, that's the way they explain planet X. That's why I'm asking. No, I'm not, I don't really know if we're familiar with that one, but I just, okay. I remember they were talking about the wave of energy um, and supposedly all these unattached souls that were free floating through and they were going to be able to move into human bodies. That was kind of what the purpose was. And it was creating a lot of fear at the time among people because they're going to get taken over. They're going to get walk in. They're going to become these other alien beings and things. And what I got at the time was uh, essentially those were aspects of ourselves from other lines that had played out, other realities that had played out. We were drawing back other aspects of ourselves back to us, kind of bringing everything together because this timeline was ending. So we were essentially that wave X was us, us coming back to ourselves to kind of reabsorb and become one again to regain our own energy. That was kind of what that was in reference to. And one thing too, I wanted to mention, you had asked earlier about how I know some of the things and where I get the information. And a lot of it is from uh, experiences that I have when I, depart from what we call a physical body um, in different ways. Other times it's when I'm asking a question uh, or I'll have something and I will suddenly get a, a download of information and I'll just start writing it out. And then I, it surprises me sometimes with what comes out. It's kind of like a channeling, but it's a channeling of myself. It's just getting answers to questions, getting information. Uh, sometimes when I'm going outside of the, what I call the physical body or physical realm and having some of the experiences, I have an an instant knowing of what of what the reality I'm experiencing is. It's just an instant knowing. There's no questions asked. There's no what's going on. It's it's just there. It's an automatic knowing and understanding. And I remember those things, and then I, I write those down. And that's where the information comes from. I if it's not information that I personally experienced or received, and it's something that I've read or heard from someone else, then I'll tell somebody that. You know, I'm not going to take someone else's and say, well, this I know for sure. No. It's, it feels right to me, but yeah. this is what this person has said, or this is what I've read. Uh, and it feels right to me, but I, I don't have that experience to tell you yes or no. Mm -hmm. So most of the stuff that I talk about is because I've had personal experiences with it mm -hmm. and it has made that information more real for me. It helped me to remember, <clears throat> remember things as I've gone along. 
So yeah. that's kind of where that's where it comes from. Yeah, <clears throat> it's, I, I, it's an ongoing I, process. Yeah, well, I knew that. I just wanted you to share that with everyone else because I had already, you know, I'd become aware of that from just our conversation. But you know, I just wanted to make everyone else aware of it um, also. And um, so I'll re we, I will read this uh, last little bit from your book. And I do highly recommend for anyone that's been interested in what he's sharing um, to, you know, invest in the book because it's not a very, it's not overly lengthy to where it's some long, hard read. It's really well written in a way that um, you don't have to try to tell, like pull out a dictionary and try to figure out what's coming next. I mean, it's just really just well written, but um what he has shared here, he says, I would like to thank you for joining me on our journey uh, in continuing the search for the truth. I'm honored to be a part of your journey and to have a share and, and to have to share mine uh, for however long that will be. And he says, I've also explained that we are beyond the physical body, how we connect to our higher self and the fact that our higher self is and that there is no one above or beyond us. And I really, really do appreciate that. And above all, he says, now that you have finished this book, I want you to understand, I, don't write, I didn't write this book to tell you what to think. I wrote it to get you to think. And so that's what I really appreciated. You know, like I really do love when we share our experiences with one another and we're not trying to force beliefs on someone else. It's just like, get you to question what, you've ex what you have been told is truth and start to really um, trust your own experiences and trust your intuition to the point to where you don't have to follow someone else. You know, you can start to acknowledge that you are the creator of your reality. Um, free will doesn't exist here and now, but it exists on the very fact that you created exactly what you wanted to experience in the here and now. Right. Yeah, and then, like as you said, with the the and thank you for that about the book. The my purpose in writing it, if people is to point out what the programs are that we're going through, the the belief systems that have been pushed upon us, and if I can get people to take a look at those, if they read it or or they just glance at it or even watch some of the other videos and take a look at the programs, and if it makes them ask themselves, well, why do I believe that, or what do I believe about that, and and why do I believe it. And do I want that belief? Mm -hmm. That that's the goal. My goal. My goal is to get is to get people to think for themselves, to ask themselves questions, and at least look at it. And then, if you want to continue to accept that belief, if you want to continue to stay in that program, hey, go for it. That's your journey. But at least ask and question yourself. You know, make it yours versus being living someone else's journey, someone else's belief systems. So that that's my whole purpose in in putting that on paper. Yeah. Thank you. And and just you know. The best thing that I can, the most important thing that I can share with anyone is, you know, I, I have created quite an adventure <laughs> for myself and it's felt very, very traumatic at times, but I will, I can truthfully say that the most painful experiences have been the most brilliant teachers. I have learned so much from the parts that were uncomfortable and I wouldn't want to trade it at all in the moment. You don't really like it so much, but yeah, you know, I mean, it is your best teachers where your greatest wisdom is gained and where your, your compassion, your empathy and your ability to just accept and embrace one another without judging and being critical. That's, that's where that comes from. So, uh, you know, I really, yeah, yeah, I really appreciate <clears throat> The way that you've written and expressed this in a way that empowers other people, Ron. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And one thing I'd pass on to Judy, if I could, that when she was talking about the issues, she's on the right track with the mere fact that she's starting to recognize negative patterns in her life, what we would consider negative patterns, because you're getting repercussions from what's going on. Mm -hmm. But when you start to look at these things and you're starting to understand that they happen because it's you. It is not it the is. landlord. It's not anyone else. The, the problems are happening because of something in you that you need to look at and deal with and change who you are. And when you sit down and do what you're doing and starting to look at those patterns, you're going to be able to change yourself, which will then change the reality that you are in because you switch to another version of you, 
and those problems will start to go away. You may get tested with them, but they're going to start to go away when you start to look at that. And that's the idea, as you talked about, Patricia, moving from being a victim kind of a scenario to where these things are always happening to me. It's always someone else. Why do I always do this? Why do I always get this? Well, no, it's because there's a lesson you need to learn there. Take a look at that lesson and, and, and then learn from it what you can. And I'll say it's going to be necessarily easy, but as you said, it's sometimes the hard experiences are the ones we learn the most from. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. You're welcome, Judy. Yeah. Okay. And thank you to everybody else too for tuning in and for your questions. Yeah, and thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share before we say good night? No, just thanks. It was a great conversation and I got a lot out of it. So it's always good to listen and hear what people have to say and get challenged in a good way. Yeah. Awesome. I just want to say um, thank you for writing the book, you know. Um, It kind of answered a lot of questions to uh, kind of a few of experiences what I've had, especially the reincarnation cycle. So for me, I really had to, I really had to read it it was definite answers and I really appreciate that so thank you for writing it you know thank you very much Tracy thank you very much and for those of you too that I do have a a YouTube channel if you just type in my name I have some videos I make them relatively short dealing with some of these subjects and some other things just kind of short things as they come up it may give you some other ideas on programs and maybe help you look at things a little bit differently as well on there yeah, and I'll make sure that um, I do share that when I post the um, interview. So I will share this on YouTube and my website. And when I do, I'll put um, your YouTube channel on there for them to go and click on as they look at the recording. Thank you, Patricia. And, and thank you for the, for the three interviews, for the chance that we've had to discuss these things. I, I very much appreciate that. Well, you know, thank you. I do appreciate it also. And so, you know, in the future, we can look at, um, we've, we've gone through his book. So we went through the 15 chapters of his book. I did see where you said there might be a part, uh, a, 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 a second book. I don't know if you're going to still do that or not, but if you do, we can definitely look at that. But if, even if not, if there's a subject that you would like to go into, or if someone wants to recommend something for us to talk about, you know, I'm completely open to doing this again and diving into just a particular subject on a deeper level. Yeah, I, I like to say I like to do a lot better when it's the kind of thing where I kind of have a direction and, and there are questions and because that brings up other ideas and it gives a good direction to it. I'm not a type of person who likes to just stand up there and lecture uh, because yeah. to me it's it just not it's not good. You know, it works a lot better when there's a subject and we start to talk about it and people have questions. We go different directions and kind of play with it. And that's, that's the kind of thing I like. It's not, like I said, I'm not the seminar guy just to stand up there and talk. Yeah. Well, I see, I love this kind of platform too, because um, one of the reasons that I do this is so that we can all, you know, grow together and become aware together. And uh, one-on-ones are important for some people, but just like in general, I love to create group environments where we can all just kind of inspire one another and, you know, help each other question the things that, you know, have been on. We, we have we all have questions and we all want to become more aware of things. So this is always a great platform for that. So I really enjoy it. If nothing else, we get confirmation from other people about what we're doing and experiencing as being what we could say the right path. I, I've yeah. gotten a lot of feedback from people in different places and it's really about confirming that they're not alone in their experiences mm-hmm. and that they don't have to keep looking over their shoulder to see who's listening when they're talking. You know, like, yeah. if you had an experience, you had an experience, enjoy it and move forward with it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to express it sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I See, that's my thing too. I'm like all about being transparent now because I'm like, I have nothing to hide. Like really when I share who I am, what can anyone take away from me when I acknowledge who I am, when I acknowledge every deep, dark secret that I have and that I acknowledge the most beautiful moments at the same time, I'm telling you my life story. I'm not giving you a candy coated version. I'm giving you the real me. And when I give you the real me, 
I mean, that it is what it is. No one can take anything away from me or add anything to my, it's just me. <laughs> and I love that. I love that freedom. Yeah, it's, it's understanding that other people don't determine your sense of self-worth or your value. Yeah. Other people don't decide whether you're going to be happy or sad. You know, don't give them that power over you. Claim yourself. If they like you, they don't like you. It's not relevant to anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Okay, everyone, this has been awesome. If no one else has anything to share, I'm going to go ahead and say good night to everyone, but I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Is anything else anyone wants to share? Okay. Okay. Um, thank you so much. I will uh, have this up on YouTube tomorrow and on our website, and uh, we'll share also uh, Ron's um, YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see what we can do in the future, okay? Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Ciao, good night. Bye. Thank you. It was Bye. great. Bye. It was great. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.